With the sole exception of perhaps Spirit Airlines, there is a solid argument to be made that Ryanair is the most despised and also made fun of airline in the modern commercial aviation industry. From extensive trashing on Twitter to countless memes about their infamous rough landings, Ryanair just seems like the one airline that everybody loves to hate. But why is this, and how exactly did Ryanair gain such an awful reputation with flyers? And more importantly, does it actually deserve the hate it receives? Make sure to subscribe to Globetrotting, where we'll look to explore some of your more pressing questions. Some common grievances with Ryanair are, by and large, the same grievances that are heard when dealing with many other low-cost airlines. Just like its other low-cost peers, Ryanair fits its planes with very small seats that are the bare minimum when it comes to utility. Most don't even feature pockets or the ability to recline. Those who have flown Ryanair describe them as cramped and as having uncomfortably thin cushioning. Ryanair cuts also all of its bonuses travellers might expect from low-cost airlines. There is no complimentary food or drink service, no in-flight entertainment, and no in-flight Wi-Fi for purchase. Ryanair also allows only one small carry-on bag to be flown for free. The rest must be paid for, although this is something you see with many other airlines globally. All of these measures are, of course, in the name of saving money. However, they have caused a lot of frustration with flyers who choose Ryanair because of their absurdly low fares, only to regret it when charges suddenly start racking up just as they get to the airport. Still, as stated, these are all simply hallmarks of an airline whose business model is to spend as little as possible. It can be argued that Ryanair doesn't deserve these criticisms, that if anything, it's the passengers who may be at fault for choosing a budget airline and all of the extra trouble that comes along with such a decision in the first place. In other words, these are not issues that are unique to Ryanair, but are simply the consequences, you could argue, of flying ultra-low cost. These consequences can be positive or negative depending on what you come to expect, and depending on your knowledge levels of the airline you're flying and their business model, which ultimately is not always going to be maybe as high as the people that are watching this video and interested in the inner workings of the industry. This is evidenced by the fact that identical components Complaints have been raised against Frontier, Wizz Air, the aforementioned Spirit Airlines, and many other low-cost companies. But the story doesn't end just there. It's not just these cost-cutting measures that have given Ryanair a bad name. There has been much more outrage over their customer service conduct and overall business philosophy. The airline has on multiple occasions considered removing two or three bathrooms on their planes, banning waiting in line for bathrooms on a plane, and even charging for using a bathroom, all as extra cost-cutting measures. For some, though, this is just a bit too far, even for a low-cost airline. Furthermore, according to AirHelp, a service that helps passengers obtain compensation after delays and cancellations, Ryanair rejected a staggering 98.4% of compensation claims in 2019. While we don't totally understand the reasoning behind each decision for the rejection, they may have been totally valid, it's definitely evident to see just how much rejection there is ongoing about trying to get costs back as a paying passenger, for whatever the reasoning may be. There was also a particularly hectic case in 2017, when Ryanair suddenly cancelled 400,000 passengers' flights out of the blue due to an error with their pilot rostering. The situation was further aggravated when Ryanair's CEO responded to the outrage by remarking that the passengers would be back simply because of his airline's low prices. The CEO himself has been at the centre of many other controversies as well, with many finding his business practices and personality somewhat brash and rude, and this has made its way onto travel forums, reviews, and much more. 
And then there's the matter of their landings, which at least according to memes circulated in the aviation community are always bumpy. Whether or not this stereotype is actually true remains unresearched. Some have claimed that Ryanair's landings are so hard because their pilots are trained to spend as little time taxiing as possible in order to save fuel. While of course this would match many people's obsession that the airline is just trying to save money, this rumour remains unproven as you can probably expect, but shows the light-hearted side of some investigative work by aviation enthusiasts. It's completely possible that this is a simply case also of selection bias, whereby the expectation that Ryanair landings are rough brings rough Ryanair landings to the surface more often, while rough landings on other airlines without a reputation for them go unnoticed. It's a very interesting point of recency bias and also selection bias. We've seen this happen on many occasions. It doesn't matter what industry, but if you want to focus in on the aviation industry specifically, look no further than recent near misses and close calls. These ultimately have no doubt been happening for some time, but because a couple were recently picked up, now everything is being investigated further, and therefore even minor incidents are being picked up and mass spread around the media. You can argue whether this has positive or negative connotations surrounding it, hopefully you would like to think it is a cause for change, but it highlights how unless one thing hadn't been investigated or noticed, this would continue to fly under the radar. Radar. Whatever the case is, in spite of its maybe bad reputation, Ryanair continues to grow larger and larger every year. It seems that no matter the compromise, there will always be some flyers who just want to fly with the cheapest ticket possible, and on most cases, that is Ryanair. And in at least some instances, statistics are also on Ryanair's side. The airline has thankfully never had a fatal accident in its entire history, and only two non-fatal incidents. Despite some claims, Ryanair is overall almost always on time, maintaining one of the best punctuality rates in Europe. Still, these facts may or may not make up for the airline's obvious flaws for some people. So, do you think Ryanair deserves its reputation of being a bad airline in the aviation industry and one that should be mocked, memed and so much more? Please let us know down below in the comments. We think this is a topic that always appears, whether it's in YouTube videos, on social media platforms, aviation forums, and in general discussion. Are Ryanair simply the focus because of their name and because one person said something, everyone has gone along with that? Or is it really true and that they aren't that good of an airline? Let us know, and we'd like to thank you very much for your support right here on Globetrotting. We hope you're enjoying the content, and if you'd like to see us explore more airlines and maybe their reputation within the industry, exploring some of the key criticisms, potential rumors, and then giving you the opportunity to share your thoughts, you can let us know either down below in the comments or share your video ideas via the Google Forms link, which can be found in the description. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time. And we'll fly.